Hey, everybody. So some of you have been asking, what do you need if you want to keep your tutoring business small? So we've got three things to focus on when you are starting to build a tutoring business that you know you do not want to grow to be a big business. So yes, one of the things, because I like to keep my business small, I don't have very many students, is having a strong network of referrals. Because I feel a little badly sometimes having to turn away families without giving them someone else to go to if I can't take on that particular student. So I always have a list of trusted professionals that I might say, hey, you know what? I don't have any room in my schedule. However, here's the name, email, phone number of another person that I think would be a great fit for you. And that works really well because if down the road, maybe you have availability, perhaps that referral network can send people to you. So it really is a nice exchange. Absolutely. And if you're keeping your business small, like maybe three, four families, you know, not a lot, then honestly, referrals and word of mouth is probably going to fill you up. That's probably going to be all you need. So because of that, you do not need to have a big, yeah. strong social media presence unless that's a part of what you want to do. So if you like sharing information and tips, like if it lights you up and it's a great way for you to teach other people, that's wonderful. But you don't have to rely on that so much to build a presence if you know you only need a few people to fill up. And the same thing with a website. So you could not have a website. Plenty of tutors don't have websites. They just have a way to email them. However, nearly everybody goes checking out services online. They go, they want to find a little bit of information. So we would still suggest that you have just a basic like one page website that's simply a landing place for people to come, see what do you do, who do you work with and how can they like take the next step with you. So we do think that would be helpful if you are willing to do a very simple website. And then our Absolutely. final thing that we think that you need, even though you will have a small business is getting back to the basics. Yes. And that means having a little bit of financial management in place. So believe it or not, you are a business. So you need to have these little ducks in a row to keep things running smoothly from a financial standpoint. And one of the first things you want to make sure that you have is to make sure you register your business and so that you have the ability to open a small business bank account. Yes. Uh, you need to have that to be able to accept payments and uh, from your families that are paying you. So you yes. want to make sure you have that in place. And check your local ordinance because every place is different. So where I live, I just had to register my business name because I was doing business as a different name other than mine. In some places, you can simply register your business under your own name and you can get a business bank account. So check your local ordinances to yeah. find out like what's the regulation in your area. Yes, yes. And there are you know, different states have different regulations. Mm -hmm. so definitely check those out. And you may even want to check in with an accountant to see, you know, what are some important steps to keep in place. We are not accountants, so we can't advise you on that but certainly check with one to get the best advice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And along with that is you will want to have a basic way of tracking your income and your expenses that go in and out of that business bank account. So even if it's something just like an Excel doc on your computer, or mm -hmm. you could actually use software, just have somewhere to where you're keeping up with that every single month and it will make your life a lot easier Whoa, at text time. Absolutely. So, these are some things you need if you're going to keep your business small. You don't necessarily need all the bell bells and whistles, all the professionals, all the social media presence and the weekly blog posting and things like that. You can decide that if you're keeping your business small, you can really prioritize what you focus on so that you build a business that fits your life and best supports you. So if you have any other questions. Good. Put them in the comments because we have a feeling there's going to be a part two. Yes, I think <laughs> <Okay>. so, Jill. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.